As AI workloads become increasingly common in organizations of all types and sizes, these organizations typically struggle in two areas in dealing with their AI workloads. Uh, one is uh, CPUs, and, and that problem has really been uh, solved in, in a large degree by GPU uh, type of technology. The other is storage I.O., and that really remains a consistent issue that needs to be addressed. Joining me to talk about that, I've invited uh, Sven Omar from DDN. Uh, Sven, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, George. So let's talk about this a little bit. What can we do from a storage I.O. perspective to address this? And I guess first, let's, let's kind of frame up the conversation and what's causing the problem. Right, let's talk about the problem first. So okay. if you look here at the left side, uh, I, I drew a picture of the more traditional model. Um, while they look very similar to begin with, you're going to see, you know, when we're talking a little bit more about that, what, what the main differences are. But in a traditional model, you typically have some computational uh, aspects up here, so this could be CPU or, or GPU, and they're typically connected through some network link uh, to some uh, uh, storage device. And so the main problem in this in this picture is that if you start scaling out um, the individual compute components up here, um, either the network part or the storage device itself uh, can become a bottleneck. So this it is. And then clearly, these environments tend to scale, right? Because I think this is a really fair drawing yep. because I, I think what I see happen a lot with AI is it, it's almost like a skunk works project to start with, and right. then people are like, whoa, it works, and then poof. Exactly, and, yeah. and that's why it's very easy to start with this model. You know, yes. this are typically like NFS filer, more the traditional sure. NAS uh, appliances that people use, and the challenges actually really come uh, in scale. And so scale can mean multiple things. So scale can mean the data set itself. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you exceed certain data set sizes, you just can't easily find filers, traditional filers for that anymore. And even if you can find big enough filers, you know, you can make them larger and larger and larger. Eventually, the network connectivity becomes right. a problem. Okay. Because the way these workflows typically uh, go is, it's not just that there is one single consumer of the data. Right. You typically have ingest where the data comes in, then you have some annotation, creation of the data, uh, you have some computational part, the training part, for example, and then you actually deploy the model at the end. And so that means there is multiple different consumers of the data, which could be CPU and GPU. And so the parallel access to, to this data is, is very, very critical. And why these filers can scale, they typically only scale up. They don't necessarily really scale out. And that is one of the key aspects that we're addressing with our A3i technology. So then what are you guys doing to sort of address that issue? Yeah, that's a very good question. So first of all, in the traditional model, you use typically NFS as a transfer protocol. NFS is very chatty. Uh, it requires lots of CPU cycles on the server and the consumer side because of the way you know TCP packets work and, and the whole processing of that. Mm -hmm. So in, in our model, uh, we use a different protocol. So we have a highly optimized protocol for that, which is leveraging RDMA technologies. Okay. So it, it offloads a lot of the network connectivity itself basically to the adapters. So it doesn't require CPU cycles really on, on both sides or actually a significant uh, limited uh, amount of that. The second thing is you can scale the compute uh, independently of the storage side. So while you're adding compute over here, you might run eventually out of either capacity or you're running out of performance down here. And the way you solve that is by simply adding additional devices into the picture and our A3i technology is capable of automatically workload balancing and basically spreading this additional workload over multiple devices. So for the end user, it is basically solving the problem that it looks like a traditional NAS system, so it's very simple to use, but the application itself doesn't need to know where the data actually is stored. Our A3i system automatically balances the data across multiple devices, and that allows you to either scale out from a capacity perspective or scale out from a performance perspective, depending on what the demand of the application is. So, so if I'm running, if I'm in charge of say this this operation up here, you're routing me uh, directly to the the data set that I need. I guess it, it's even better than that. Not okay. just that we route you to the correct data, we actually up automatically paralyze the workload for you on the I/O pass. Okay. So that means if you have a single client that needs to write data. It doesn't go to one single storage device as a target. Gotcha. The single client submits I.O. and we automatically spread it across as many devices are here. While over here in the traditional way, if you store a file, it goes to one filer. And so if that file is in very high demand, you can't really solve that problem. The bottleneck is always going to be either the network link to the filer or the filer itself. 
while in our case we take this whole problem out of the picture because we spread the workload across all the devices in the system. Okay, and, and what's the limit that I can scale here? Well, uh, we have deployments these days of uh, three-digit petabytes for wow. large-scale high-performance compute systems. In the AI and analytics space, you know, the systems are not that large so far, but you have petabyte size systems which can easily have 10 or more of these storage devices in it and tens or hundreds of these compute elements accessing the data today. Okay. So we definitely, from our HPC background, we are absolutely ready from a scale and you know, velocity perspective to address whatever needs the market has or the application uh, has in, in this particular area. And just to clarify, you, you had it drawn up before we've, we started the scale. So that, to kind of handle that sort of skunk work rollout, I, I can start with just sort of this blue exactly. right here. Exactly, right? that's the beauty of it. Basically, your starting point is not significantly bigger than here. You can start with as little as you know a terabyte or a couple of terabyte. Mm -hmm. uh, economically, it only makes sense if you do a little bit bigger than that. But essentially, you start very, very small, mm -hmm. still comparable to the traditional model, but basically you can scale it in any dimension, capacity as well as performance, but just basically adding resources into the into the pool. So essentially you're just putting a better foundation here that, that can scale out as Correct. the environment Correct. scales out. Yeah. Okay, great. So Sven, I, you know, let me kind of um, throw a, a, a fly in the ointment here. What I see a lot of guys doing to try to address this is they put local storage uh, on these devices. Doesn't that make this not as required? Yeah, sure. You, I mean, you can obviously add, you know, a local SSD, which is something you see quite uh, often, uh, that people basically deploy a little bit of, of fast NVMe storage locally uh, to the systems. The challenge with that is, first of all, how do you know that the, this particular node that needs to access the data actually has the data local? Oh, yeah. So there's a lot of movement requirement and orchestration of the data, so you always have the data at the right side, which also means there is significant delays and overhead in doing this. Sure. And so in our case, given that we've solved the performance problem, which is primarily being, or tried to be addressed by these local devices, mm -hmm. and we can give you that performance in a shared efficient way, it doesn't require that complexity of orchestrating, copying data local for processing, moving the results out, we can give you access to everything in a shared model, and that basically makes these uh, local devices uh, irrelevant. You don't need them. And as I recall earlier, you said this was an RDMA-based uh, network? That's correct. So that even the network overhead is going to be very low from it, the latency exactly. perspective. Exactly, yeah. So we support TCP as well, but for larger scale deployments where people really care about performance, we typically deploy this with an RDMA capable network. Great. So so really it sounds to me like it all comes down to having that the right foundation, right? That I can start small, and if I, but if I start with this as my foundation, I don't get into this sort of uh, messy little effect of, of going to local devices and things like that. That's correct. All right, well, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. So there you have it. Like I said before, you know, the, the CPU side has really been solved by GPUs to a large extent. And this sort of parallelized uh, storage environment is really the better foundation as you go to build out uh, an AI environment. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland.